Welcome back. This is the third segment in section 6.3 and likely the last one. Um, we had looked at um, equations involving multiple angles previously. Uh, now we're going to look at things that involve half angles. Um, just a couple of problems, enough to kind of fill out this video, but just so you see them, because the problem when you, uh, you know, you'll end up with, with things sometimes that don't have any answers, which is kind of a weird situation. But let's kick over here and get the ball rolling. I think we, last time we got to page four, section. These are very dense problems. Um, anyways, so let's, I've only got three that I want to show you because I think it pretty much spells out everything there is to see about this. But um, here we go. How about, how about we start with one that's um, kind of simple. Two cosine of x over two minus square root of two equal to zero. Okay, so um, just like we've done in the past, you wanna isolate the trigonometric function. You're gonna move that to the other side, you're gonna divide by two, you're left with cosine of x over two equal to root two over two. Now, we know how to, if, if this was x, we know how to solve that almost immediately. Um, we would simply say, you know, whatever the variable is, equal to plus or minus the inverse cosine of root two over two plus, uh, plus a coterminal angle. Um, so let me, let me kind of, since this is the first time we're seeing it, let me do that kind of in steps. So the first, um, the principal root of the argument is the inverse cosine of square root of two over two plus two pi times n. And because it's cosine, the alternate root is just the negative. Um, so where does that occur? That occurs at um, pi over four. So we have plus or minus pi over four plus two pi times n. Now, normally, if this was if this was just x, this would lead to two solutions, right? We would have um, two solutions within zero to two pi. Um, we would have the two locations where cosine is equal to root two over two, which happened to be one angle in quadrant one, one angle in quadrant four. Um, so now we need to multiply the entire equation by two um, so that we just simply have x. So when I multiply everything by two, I get x is equal to plus or minus, not now pi over two, plus four pi times n. And the problem with this four pi over n is that it leads to there being only one solution, right? Because uh, the, first, the first solution is um, pi over two. Uh, if you add four pi to that, you're way outside of the range. And if you take the negative branch, it's negative pi over two. And again, if you add four pi to that, it's gonna be outside the range. So there's really, there's really only one solution. And that is X must be pi over two. So sorry, there you see sort of a reduction of the number of solutions. And so that rule that we were talking about, if you've got a trig function, uh, for every trig function, you have two possible solutions, but then you multiply by the coefficient of the, of the argument. Well, in this case, it's not really a co, it's a fraction, so you're dividing by one half. So one, two solutions times one half gives you only one solution. It's kind of a good rule of thumb. It's, it's not universally true as we've seen, but um, we feel confident that this is the one solution. So uh, let's try another one, maybe ramp it up just a little bit. Um, so let's take sine squared of x over two minus one half equal to zero. This looks um, deceptively easy. Uh, one thing that we could consider though, is we could consider using a half angle substitution. Uh, sine of x over two is the square root of one minus cosine of x over two. Um, and by squaring it, we would end up canceling, we, we'd get rid of the radical that's in there, um, which might be a smart way to go. Um, but since we're, yeah, I mean, we've seen the one like, like this, pretty clear how to proceed with a, with a half angle. So maybe I make a substitution here uh, with, a, with a half angle substitution. So recall that sine of x over two is plus or minus the square root of one minus cosine of x over two. Okay. 
minus one half. And when I, oh, and this is, sorry, this is squared. So when I square this, it will get rid of the plus or minus. And it will also, um, it'll get rid of the, the radical here. So we're left with one minus cosine of X over two minus one half equals zero. And if you look at that carefully, this is one half minus one half, and then minus cosine over two, this thing all reduces down to this equation, cosine of X equal to zero. And uh, there are, there's only one solution for that. Well, there's two, sorry, there are two solutions for this. Um, so X is equal to uh, the inverse cosine of zero is pi over two. So we have plus or minus pi over two plus two pi times N, which if we're only looking in the range between zero and two pi, is gonna give us the two solutions, pi over two and three pi over two. We've done this one a couple of times, so I didn't dwell on it too much. So the question is, would we have gotten the same solutions if we, if we did this problem without this substitution? And let's just go through it real quickly um, to see if that's in fact what would happen. So going back to the same problem, we're just gonna try it a different way. I think the way we did it was probably the easiest way, but um, you know, might not be that obvious. So sine squared of x over two minus one half equal to zero. Okay, so we want to start by isolating the um, the, the the relevant um, trig function. So we have sine squared x over two equal to one half, and then we take the um, the square root of both sides. And remember that's gonna end up with a plus or minus. So we end up with sine of X over two equal to plus or minus square root of two over two. You can verify that those are the same. Um, okay, so this is two equations then. So we've got sine of X over two equal to square root of two over two. Well, we know what solutions come out of that, right? You have X, over two equal to the inverse sine of square root of two over two plus two pi times n, or x over two equal to pi minus inverse sine of root two over two plus two pi times n. And when we double both of these, we end up with twice those numbers. So, so um, what, this, what this reduces to here is x equal to two times, well, this is just pi over four. So this will be pi over two plus four pi times n. And again, this is pi over two, or sorry, pi over, pi over four. So three pi over four doubled is gonna be six pi over four, which is actually three pi over two plus four pi times n. And notice those are your, um, those are the two solutions that we got in the previous uh, method. What about the other side? Um, let's go with uh, sine of x over two equal to negative square root of two over two. Well, that's gonna occur, uh, let's see, we'll get x over two equal to the inverse sine of negative root two over two plus two pi times n and also x over two equal to pi minus inverse sine negative square root of two over two plus two pi times n. Um, uh, this, this reduces down to negative um, pi over four. Uh, so when you double it, x will be equal to negative pi over two plus four pi times n. And unfortunately, this is not in the range, uh, or it's not, it's not in the interval that we've discussed. And if you try to add four pi to it, it's now, it's not too big. So it's, it's too small here. If you add one, if n equals one, it's too big. So this actually doesn't contribute any solutions. And it's quite possible that this one does something similar. Uh, so let's, let's take the other equation. Now notice uh, this is, 
this is pi over four or negative pi over four. So when you um, when you add pi when you subtract a negative, you're adding pi over four. This becomes five pi over four. So x will be ten pi over four plus four pi times n, and that of course reduces down to five pi over two, which makes it outside of the range. But if you were to use, um, if you were to maybe try to use n equal negative one, it's gonna be a negative angle. So neither one of these contribute anything over here on the, on the right. This one's, uh, it, it, it like it misses the entire um, circle, uh, the, the entire zero to two pi for both of them. So the only solutions that we're actually left with are the ones that we had before, pi over two and three pi over two. Now, this would be sort of the brute force method of solving it. Um, I'd argue that using a trigonometric substitution makes it a lot easier. And that's usually the case. And that's kind of why we spend so much time on them too, is that they, they really do help reduce problems down to things that are a little bit more simplistic. Okay, so the last problem I wanna look at is one that I think we can whip out pretty quickly um, again, with the trigonometric substitution, in this case, two of them. So, um, but it's it, the the um, the identity works a little tricky. So let's start with um, sine of x over two plus cosine of x over two equal to one. Now, this is one of these situations where we don't have a Pythagorean identity, but we have the right terms. Um, that if we squared them, we'll maybe something will happen. Um, I don't wanna separate them because it makes the algebra a little trickier. I'm just gonna go ahead and square the left-hand side and square the right-hand side. So I'm squaring both sides. Um, so it means I have to go back and check all my solutions, but the, when you square this left-hand side, remember you gotta foil it out. I'm gonna have sine squared of x over two plus two sine of x over two, cosine of x over two, plus cosine squared x over two equal to one. And there's my Pythagorean identity, right? And there's a double angle, right? It's a double, it's a double angle identity for a half angle, <laughs> which is kind of convenient. Um, so let me, let me collect these up. So it's gonna be one plus two sine of x equal to one, right? Slick. Um, so what this will, in, in essence, will reduce down to is an equation where sine is equal to zero. Sine of x, not x over two, but sine of x equal to zero. So we know where those, where those solutions occur. Um, the, the, uh, the, the, we've done this problem uh, a couple times, in fact. So uh, you will have sine, uh, sorry, x equal to um, two pi times n, which will really only be zero between zero and two pi, or x equal to pi plus two pi times n, which, you know, you can combine these together to just get that x is equal to pi times n. Um, now, if you go back into the original equation, uh, there's only two possible candidates between zero and two pi. That's either zero or pi. But because we square both sides, we have to go back and check. So let's plug, let's start with zero. Um, if x is zero, then sine, then x over, then x over two is zero, sine of zero is zero. Cosine of zero is one, and so we have a good solution. So x could be zero. Let's see if it, the other one works. For pi, if you plug in pi for sine, you get pi over two. Sine of pi over two is going to be one, right? Sine of pi over two is one. And for cosine, uh, cosine of pi over two is zero. So if one plus zero equals one. And so that one actually works as well. And so there's our, there's our two solutions to that equation. So these, um, the half angles, um, they're not a whole lot different. It's just that you end up kind of losing solutions sometimes. Uh, it's easy enough to write down the, um, 
write down the answers in their general form, but when you have to figure out which ones um, uh, fall between zero and two pi, that can get a little bit tricky. And for the most part, we haven't used particularly difficult arguments. You can cer certainly have situations where, you know, they don't have exact values and everything else. So it, it could get messier, but we're gonna try to keep it down to a dull roar. Okay, so this, uh, this ends, um, the material from uh, section 6.3, I will see you again with the last section, 6.4.